In the previous videos, we have implemented vector subtraction, and using that, we can subtract these two vectors or vertices or whatever you wish to think of them as, and, and create this vector, which is good. And then the next thing we need to do is make a vector that's perpendicular to this one. Why? Well, we'll get to that eventually, but I'm actually going to square up my window as best as I can there. That, does that look like a perfect diamond or if you rotate it uh, 45 degrees or pi over over 4 uh, radians? If you rotate it, does that look like a square? Hopefully that looks kind of square. So if I have a vector from here to here and I want to create a vector that's perpendicular to this vector. So there you go, there's a perpendicular one, correct? So you could think, hey, Jamie, just subtract uh, this point from this point, and that'll give you your perpendicular vector. And that would, that'd be fair, that'd be fair. But what if I didn't have a nice diamond here? What if I had, I don't know, some shape with several sides? That's a shape with several sides. <laughs> what if I had something more like that? Well, now I don't have these nice, this nice situation with these, these vertices. So I want to do a more general approach where I have this vector here, and I need to rotate at 90 degrees. Why are we rotating at 90 degrees? We'll get to that shortly. But for now, I just want a vector that's perpendicular to that vector. And remember, I, I can draw these vectors wherever I want to. So I'll draw that perpendicular vector actually right here. Or I could do it here or here. It doesn't really matter. I, I want a vector that's perpendicular uh, to the one we just created. Now I could get that vector using sines and cosines and that sort of thing. But there's actually a sweet little trick with two-dimensional vectors that we can use uh, to solve that problem. Let me get some graph paper up here. I decided I'll use my program instead. You can see I've zeroed out one of the vectors, so it's pointing at the origin. And then we have the resulting vector, which is just the result of this, but the scalar is one, so really we just need to be concerned about these two components. Two, four, so two, four, and we have our resulting vector right here, the red one. Okay, if I want a, a vector that's perpendicular to this one, I could kind of eyeball it and uh, and say, well, a perpendicular vector would kind of come out like this and so on and so forth. But let me, let me just, let me just, let me try a trick here. All right, we're going one, two, one, two, three, four. Well, what if I go one, two, three, four, one, two, right here, and then if I can use my little right click trick and draw a straight line as possible hopefully that looks perpendicular and 90 degree angle or pi over 2 radians hopefully that looks perpendicular so so how did I get that how did I get that well you saw exactly what I did I, I essentially swapped the two elements so we started with 2 4 okay 2 4 I swapped them all right, four, two, but that's not the only thing I did. What else did I do? It's, it's we're, we're going down now, aren't we? Instead of going up, we're, we're, we're not a positive in the two, we're, we're negative in the two. So I have to negate, negate the second element. All right, and if you think back to your algebra days and rise over run, that's exactly what we're doing here. We have a, a rise of four, a rise of four and a run of two. Well, now we're doing a rise of negative two and a run of four, and that gives us a, a, a ninety degree angle. And you can work out the other math with the sines and the cosines, and you'll see yes, yes, that works. What if I want to go the other way? Okay, what if I want a perpendicular vector in in this direction? What would I do? Well, pause the video and, and think about it. It's, it's actually not that difficult. Okay, I would I would essentially take this out and I would stop right here. Okay, and the length of the vector doesn't matter. What's more important is I'm getting this 90 degree angle, but I'm getting it the other direction. Okay, and so it just so happens. Hey, Jamie, you just swap the inputs again. You said negative four, positive two that time. So let me let me just here we go. We swap the inputs or the elements again. We swapped them, but this time we're going to negate the first one and not the second one. So this is clockwise. If you think of your clock on the wall, that's clockwise. This is counterclockwise. So to do counter 
clockwise, we negate the first one. And to go clockwise, we negate the second one. But we always swap. We always swap. Well, guess what we're going to do in our code to get a perpendicular vector? We're going to do exactly this. Swap the elements and negate one of them, depending on which direction we want to go. Now, before I clear all this off, I'm going to actually take a Windows snippet of what we have here so we can refer to it later. And, and uh, in the next video, we're actually going to implement the code to do this. And unit tested should be pretty short and sweet.